Hello, 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 my little bravelings, and welcome to your Space Dad Al's fast and easy lesson on how to station trade for pilots what don't fly so good, but want to make lots of isk anyway. So, I'm Al Gazelle, and now it's time to teach everybody how to station trade. Station trading is... I'm not kidding you, the easiest way to make ISK in EVE. It is the lazy man's way to make ISK. <laughs> so to start with, there are some skills you are going to need, and then there are some skills that you are going to want, and there's not many of them, and they're all fairly fast trains, and you can use the profits from your first trades to get you some plus implants to make the training even faster. And then when you're done with the training, which does not take very long, you can just stop training on that tune, or you can turn it into a skill extractor tune, or you can, you know, there's a million things you can do. This is a very specialized job field in EVE, and it does require like putting somebody in one place and then not moving them much. Right? You'll move around a little bit, but it'll mostly be in shuttles. There's a, so if you open up your skill window and you go to trade, which is the very last one, right? It's almost like CCP doesn't want you to know about the secret of station trading. Um, it's the very last one. Then even if you select all skills, there just aren't that many of them in there. And there are one, two, three skills you're going to completely ignore because you don't need them. And then the rest of the skills, some of them only need to be, actually, there's four skills you can completely ignore. And a couple of them only need to be trained up to level two. That's it. You only need to train them up to level two or level three or level four. Very few of these skills need to be trained up to level five. So, all right, let's go through it. This way you have an understanding of what the skills do, and that way you can keep them in the back of your head when you're figuring out your skill plan, which honestly is very easy. You're like, oh, I need this, and it's going to say, well, you need this prerequisite, so you just toss it in and you're done. Right? And you're, you're, if your skill, plan, your skill plan can and will include, you know, all of these but a couple, and then it's just train up to level four, train up to level four, train up to level two, train, you know, whatever. It's, it's very easy. It does not take a whole lot of thought. So, all right, let's go and take a look at the skills. If the skill is not in this list and it's in the skill box in, on your EVE character, then you do not ever need it for station trading, okay? All right, so I've divided them up into three groups, roughly by like the order that you'll train them in within that group, but don't take that as gospel. I've also noted the alpha limits and I straight up took this information from the UniWiki because they already had it nicely formatted. I just eliminated the ones we're not going to talk about and put them in a different order. So, all right, first group of skills are your trade slot skills. Without trade slots, you cannot station trade, so you need these. So you've got trade, retail, wholesale, and tycoon. And each each one of the ones after trade, and I put them in order, so retail, and then after retail comes wholesale, and after wholesale comes tycoon, you get more slots than the previous level gave you per level. So anytime you can, you know, go up to four and then start a new one, start the new one first. Right? And so for example, retail, let's bring that up in our skill window. So if you double click that and click requirements, you'll notice it's trade two, okay? So that's all you need to start training retail. So when you're making your skill queue, go up to trade two and then immediately start training retail, right? Don't, tra uh, don't train trade five until you absolutely need it for something else. So after retail comes wholesale. So let's take a look at wholesale. Wholesale requires, requires retail five. It also requires a couple of other skills. But, you know, the UI will tell you when you try and drag it in. It's no big deal. So you want to, now for years and years and years, I have stopped at wholesale four. 
Okay. Like I don't like I have Tycoon bought and I bought it years ago, but I've never and it's injected, but I've never trained it. I have never needed more than the 125 slots having retail four or retail five, trade four, and wholesale four is given me. And you can go well beyond that. And people who like want to spend a lot of time doing this, go for it. But I've never needed more than 100. Like I don't hardly ever use my 125 slots, even when I'm going full bore. I usually have, I think the maximum I've ever used is 106 slots. All right, those are the trade skills. They're very self-explanatory. Again, retail gives you eight slots per level, right? Wholesale gives you 16 slots per level. The next four confuse the hell out of people. All right, so, and, and the reason is, is because they are worded very specifically. And if you don't understand the exact definitions of the words that CCP is using, then it comes across as very, very confusing. But I'm going to give you an analogy that will make it a whole lot easier. And that analogy is artillery. Okay. These skills are for doing stuff outside of the station that you happen to be in, okay? And so you're gonna be firing little artillery shells of buy and sell orders into other stations, okay? And so these four give you the ability to aim, which is, you know, set up a buy or a sell order at a remote station, but also adjust your area of effect which is the range at which your buy or sell order is visible from the station, okay? And then there's a skill called day trading, which lets you remotely adjust the prices on those things. All right, now, as a station trader, you will not need more than a couple of levels unless it's required for a skill, okay? So marketing, so let's, let's go with marketing. Okay, marketing is the ability to sell items remotely, okay? Each level increases the range from which, from the seller to the item being sold, okay? All right, what does that mean? That means that if you are sitting in a station and you set up a buy order in that station, without marketing, you are limited to people only seeing that sell order, or, or yeah, you're only seeing that sell order from that station, okay? You can increase the range at which people see your stuff, okay? That's it, that's all it does. It's actually kind of a useless skill. I didn't, I don't use it. Um, I, the only reason I have it is because I need it for something else further on down the line. All right, procurement. Procurement is a good one. Procurement allows you to set up buy orders remotely. And we are gonna use this to save ourselves an absolute womp ton of ISK a little later on. Along with, procure, so procurement allows you to shoot your little artillery buy order cells uh, to different stations, okay? Visibility allows you to increase the area of effect of your little buy order shells. So you can have with procurement, uh, with, yeah, with procurement three, right? You have a range of five. So anywhere within five jumps of where you are, you can set up little buy orders. And then with visibility, you can increase that from station to system and then to one jump and then to five jumps and so on and so and eventually to the whole region if you really want to. But I mean, if you're gonna do the whole region, just do it in the station you're in, it's fine. And then day trading. Day trading lets you look at your orders see one that's in the station that's not the station that you're in and then adjust it. And depending on the amount of skill points that you have in day trading is how far away you can do that. That's it. That's all they do. They're, they're just the ability to set and adjust the range of buy and sell orders in, in stations that are not your own. All right. 
the last three are the ones that will save you money. Now, a lot of people will tell you these are the most important skills, and they are. In the long run, these will save you the most money. The problem is people then assume that these are the ones you should train first. These are not the ones you should train first. These are the ones you should train last. They are the most important, but you're gonna be doing this for a very long time. It is more important that you get up and running than you start saving yourself money on items that cost, you know, 5,000 disc. No, just save, do your trade skills, then do your range skills, and then do your accounting broker relations and advanced broker relations. Also, they don't save you as much ISK as they look like they save you because they are applying percentages to things that are already percentages. In addition, with the way I'm gonna teach you to set up buy orders, you will be avoiding most of the broker fees anyways. The only time you'll be hitting real broker's fees is when you are selling something. But let's go through them anyways. So, all right. Accounting will reduce your transaction tax by 11%. Now, these are flat, this is a flat 11% of the original value, okay? So it's not 11%, actually, let me back up a second. We'll reduce your sales tax by a flat 11%. The problem is your sales tax is 8%, okay? So you're only saving 11% of 8%, right? It, like I said, these things are not saving you quite as much money as you think they are. Now, it matters on big ticket items, like, you know, if you're buying or selling an Asbel, which costs four to five billion ISK, and that, you know, the difference between 8% and 5% is huge. But when you're just starting out, you're not dealing in those things. You're dealing with things that cost 30,000 ISK or 100,000 ISK. And, you know, 8% is completely manageable while you're getting your skills up. Broker relations, broker fees by 10% per level. In, a, in an NPC station, broker fee is 3% of the order's total value. So again, it's not saving you as much as you might think it is. Oh, I'm saving 10%. No, 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 no. You're saving 10% of 3%, right? It's a flat 0.3% subtracted from that 3% for every level, okay? So if there were 10 levels of broker relations, you'd be able to get it down to zero, but you can get it down to 1.5 with this skill at five. And yes, it's worth training to five, but it's not worth training to five immediately. Get your other stuff done first. And then the last one is advanced broker relations. And you know this is a pain in the butt skill when the CCP text for it is one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs long. This is, so what CCP says is proficiency in negotiating the brokerage cost of relisting a market order at a new price. Okay, so this is for people who can't stop touching their stuff. All right, now CCP redesigned the station trading workflow so that people who used to one isk things all the time and touch things all the freaking time are now very severely punished. You are now rewarded for knowing how markets work more than your time spent refreshing your, your buy and sell order list and going, oh no, somebody beat me and putting it up for another 0.1 isk, okay? And this will reduce your relisting costs, which means that you can relist more often than other people. It does not mean you can relist a lot without losing a significant amount of ISK. So don't relist if you don't have to. Let the market do its work. If you're near the top, then you should be fine. And I'll tell you ways on how to, how to figure that out as we go through the class. All right, so that's the skills. Let's take a look at an item. And I will teach you how to read the price history graph. The price history graph is going to teach you or tell you just about everything you need to know about an item and whether or not it's worth investing in, okay? So 
let's go ahead and if you're in a MAR, go ahead and open up the domain regional market. That's the little graph looking thing, Alt R will do it. And in the search bar in the upper left, we're gonna look at Kaldari Navy Warp Scrambler. So this is an example of something that is actually pretty good to invest in, all right? Uh, now I'm gonna tell you how to read this chart by way of yet another metaphor. What you are looking at is not a chart of buying and selling. No, 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 no. It is a river, okay? And the banks of the river are defined by that wide gray area that's mostly great until um, a few weeks ago, and then all of a sudden it overflows its banks to the north and then comes sliding back down, okay? The river has two currents, all right? It has the, the fast current, which is the little blue line, all right? And it has the slow current, which is the little orange line. And then you have boats on the river, okay? And you want, you want the boats to be generally in the middle of the river, but if they tend to cluster up at the top and then down at the bottom kind of alternately, that's fine too. And then on your bank of the river, you have grass and you want nice tall grass, okay? So let's go over what these things are. They all have like very fancy names, but freaking that sound horrible and confusing and very mathematical, but they're very easy. The white gray thing is called the Donchian channel. Now the Donchian channel is literally just lowest sell order and the highest buy order, that's it. We're going to sell orders up at the top, buy orders at the bottom, and that's the spread between them. And there you go. That's the whole thing. And so if the Donchian channel is really wide, that's literally your margin. Wider Donchian channel means you want in on that object more than you want in on an object that has a very narrow Donchian channel. Okay. The fast current, right, is the five-day moving average, and it should stay, right, if it's a good item where people are buying and selling it, it will generally stay within the Donchian channel, okay? If it's out of the Donchian channel, then something's happening, or there's not a whole lot of stuff being sold, or, or the price changed very quickly, and there's, there's a discontinuity in the graph. But for the most part, the stuff, especially when you're just starting out, you want to look for a graph that looks looks like this, okay? The the five-day moving average, which is just the five-day moving average of the little yellow dots, which are the direct, or which are the median price for that day, right? Not the average price, the median price. Half of all prices were above them and half of all prices were below them, okay? So if the dot is a little more towards the upper part, then there isn't there isn't a way to tell whether that was more buy orders or sell orders, but it does mean that the median price was higher, right? So on average, right, and and there and the reason I'm being like using weasel words here is because there are particular like outcomes that will give you like misleading ideas as to whether or not things sold well or didn't. But if you look at the first, the first major rise there that happened on October 25th, the median price was 120 million ISK, right? And there's a long, big drop below that, which means there was more there was more buying than there was selling going on. But if you look at the line that that makes, right, and all the way down, it goes all the way down to the bottom of, what, 60, 70 million isk, right? So things were selling from Buy, or people were selling two buy orders for 60 million isk, and those people who, who got their stocks replenished were very happy because they were then able to sell them for 150 million isk. I mean, the margin on these things was huge back in October. All right, so that's the, going back, that's the, um, uh, the seven day moving average. The orange line is the 20 day moving average, right? It's just taking the average of the last 20 for that particular day. It goes back 20 days, collects all the little orange dots and averages them together. Just like the blue line 
does the same thing, but only goes back seven days and averages them all together. And you want the orange line to be within the blue line at all times, right? That means there is a steady pace of buying and selling. And then the last thing and probably the most important thing and what, what people m most screw up is the grass at the bottom. That's just the total number of orders, okay? Yeah, that's the total number of things sold that day. Now, here's the thing. If your little dots are all up at the top for a bunch of time, right, the, that grass is telling you that people bought off of the market all day and did nothing else, right? And so all those completed orders are only telling you that people bought off the market. If they're at the bottom, they're only telling you that people sold to the market. If they're in the middle, right? They're telling you that some people sold and some people bought, right? So when you have a bunch of, when you have a graph where you have a bunch of your boats in the middle of the river, right? The grass is telling you that about half of them were to sell orders and about half of them were to buy orders, okay? So the total movement for that day, if you're looking to set up buy orders, is only gonna be about half of what the grass tells you was the number of orders that were filled that day, okay? So let's take an example. If we look at, let's open up Plex. So go into your search bar, type in Plex, and it'll be under pilot services. And you'll notice that, yep, they're all at the bottom. There's a few days where people sell to you, but this is an example of an item where it is extremely easy to build up a stock of things and rather much more difficult to build or to sell that stock to other people. Now this is Plex, it moves tens of thousands of units a day. So hard here is a relative term. If you're looking at something that moves only 30 things a day on average, then you're, you're actually going to have a hard time selling things. So things that are all the way at the bottom are going to be very difficult. If you look at large skill injectors, so let's type that in. And you will notice that they're all at the top, which means it is very, very difficult to get anybody to sell you any so that you can turn around and sell them. Okay. Now, there are, there is a technique that I will explain later um, where when you see a graph like this and you have ISK that is sitting around doing nothing, then you can use that ISK to take a graph that looks like this and turn it into billions and billions of ISK. But when you're just starting out, don't try and do advanced things, just find shit where the little boats are all in the middle. When the little boats are all in the middle, we're looking good. All right, let's go back to Caldari Navy Warp Scrambler. So now we're back looking at the Caldari Navy Warp Scrambler. Now those two things, the Plex and the large skill injectors, did hundreds of units a day for the large skill injectors and tens of thousands of units a day for the Plex. So look down here at the graphs for this one, okay? The, the first number to show up on, on, on the right-hand side is 10, okay? And notice how if you go across and hold your mouse at 10, you don't cross very many blue lines, right? Most of them are in the six to five range. So you're looking at five to six units sold a day on average. Right, And the boats are in the middle, which means half of them are being sold and half of them are being bought. So you're actually looking at only three units a day, right, are being either bought or sold. Okay. So now let's go take a look at the market data. Okay. That's the tab to the left. So now you'll notice here that let's start at the bottom, right? Always start at the bottom. Always start with buy orders because that's how you start as a day trader. So we're going to start at the bottom of the green part. Buy orders go up in price. So when you're adjusting a buy order, right, you want to scroll so that the price increases. Sell orders go down in price. So when you're adjusting a sell order, you want to make sure that you're scrolling down, right? You always want there, and the easy way to remember it is that you're always trying to get from one to the other. Right? If you're adjusting a buy order, it's because you want to sell stuff so the price goes up. If you're adjusting sell order, it's because you want to get rid of it so you can go back to doing buy orders so you can sell stuff so you can get rid of it. Right?
the spread here is 70 million to 87 million. 17 million is per, right? But remember, we already figured out that this is only a three item a day object, right? So if you put an order for 20, right, in your buy orders, not only are you gonna have a whole lot of ISK sitting there for a very long time, right, it's, you're just gonna be constantly adjusting that same thing and you're gonna be subject to the vagaries of the market. If it crashes, well, you're kind of stuck. You're gonna to have to adjust it again and lose more money. So my recommendation is, unless it's something that sells in the like, you know, that just sells like hotcakes all the goddamn time, only put in at a maximum the daily amount for a buy or a sell order that sh that is actually bought or sold because it's still going to take you several days to get rid of it, right? Or to accumulate it. And the reason for that is you're not the only one doing it, right? So that brings me to my next thing, the competition that you will face. So let's look at the buy orders here and take a look and we'll see two days. Oh, hold on. One other thing. When you're creating a buy order you have, or a sell order, you have an option to do it for less than 90 days. Don't. It doesn't save you any money at all. And it gives you more flexibility. Right? And if this, if this guy, so look at the top, top line here. It says two days, 19 hours, 15 minutes, 16 seconds for me which means he literally just put that in a couple of hours ago and he put it in for three days. If you want your money back real quick, this guy doesn't know if he wants to be in this market. So he only put a buy order up for three days. And if it doesn't work within that three days or, you know, he keeps adjusting it so that it sticks around, he is forced to adjust it every three days. Whereas the guy below him, right? If the price goes in a direction that he doesn't want it to, he can just ignore it for three months, right? The guy on the, the guy at the top there literally screwed himself. There is absolutely no reason ever, except for time limited items, to do anything less than ninety days. So don't. You'll you'll be tempted. You'll be like, oh, yeah, well, that's more efficient. No, it's not more efficient. It's literally costing you flexibility, and that is all it is doing. There is nothing but downsides to it. All right, so. But let's look at this. He is selling from the station itself, all right? And he is ordering two, which is a reasonable amount. If you look down further, right, you'll see orders for four, which is kind of pushing it. And all the way near the bottom, third from the top, is a guy who is ordering five, right? Now, he's been ignoring, he's been ignoring this, this buy order for a very long time. So he doesn't really care what the market does. As long as it eventually approaches 65 million, he's fine. I mean, he's perfectly happy with whatever his five times 65.5 million ISK is sitting in escrow. I tend to be a little less happy with things like that, but you know, to each their own. I, I tend to like volume and speed over long-term investments for things that are worth less than a hundred million ask. Right? And I mean, when, once you're talking, you know, once you're up in the billion ish range, no problem setting a buy order and ignoring it for three months until the market returns. For stuff like this, why? I mean, it's a hundred million ask. It should be moving like that, it, you know, faster than you can snap. So for this, there's a spread of 17 million ISK, which is awesome, but there's also only three per day being sold to buy orders. So you put up a buy order for three and it's going to take you probably four, you know, maybe even eight days to fill all three of those buy orders because you have three people here who are actively involved in maintaining their prices, right? And you look at that because you see a two day and then you see two 89 days, right? And then you see a guy who only touches it once a week. But also he doesn't really have to touch his much because if you look, he is willing like a savage to go five jumps to go pick up <laughs> what somebody sold to him, right? That is not station trading. There is a term for it, but I can never remember what it is. It's not region trading either. Uh, it might be region trading, but it's not cross region trading, which is something else entirely. 
these three guys are doing it right, but they're doing it dumb, okay? They're using the station, right? So they're paying the full broker's fee. If you'll notice, fifth in the line there at 70,150,000 ISK is somebody who's using the Ashab mini market now open, okay? Now he has his, again, dumbly set to three jumps. You wanna set yours to one jump. And in order to do that, you go back up to the skills and you train everything you need for visibility two. Visibility two will get you your one jump range for selling from, while well, sitting in a mar, you can sell in a shab and then set a one jump range and that will cover a mar. And because of the way trade hubs work, you will very rarely, although it does happen, you will very rarely get somebody selling you something anywhere other than a mar. Right? You might, you know, you might occasionally get somebody selling you something low value in a Panergman, or somebody might go to the wrong station in a mar and you know, sell you something from, you know, the the weapons factory there or something. I mean, it does happen, but very rarely, and it's not a large percentage of your volume. So once a month, you can go into a hauler's channel, set up a bunch of contracts and say, hey guys, I'll give you, you know, 500,000 disc if you move this like five pieces of stuff for me in, a, uh, in an interceptor, and that would be great. Thanks guys. And they'll do it and it'll be done in like 20 minutes. They're super fast and really cheap, it's great. So you don't ever have to move once you have your skills set up. Let us talk about different styles of trading, okay? There are two major ones, There is, and they both fall under station trading. The first is day trading, and the second is investment, okay? Now, day trading is when you are buying something to immediately relist, okay? The day trading depends on volume more than it depends on margin. Okay, you can day trade in things that are smaller margin because they are going to sell fast and you get your ISK back and you can turn around and do it again. Okay, day trading is what most people think of when they think of station trading, but it is not the way you make your big money. It will be the way you make most of your money, but it's not the way you make your big money. Your big money comes from big ticket items that you look at the price history graph and see the price is lower than the historical average and you buy a bunch of them and then you put them in a station container and you wait until the price restores to its historical average or even a little bit better and then you sell them, okay? And that can take months. So a classic example is what I was able to pull off with the skill extractor market. So you'll notice skill extractors are expensive. They cost about 480 million ISK to buy off of the market. And if you want to buy them from other people, they're gonna cost you 450 to 460 million ISK. Now let's go look at the price history. All right. And notice how the skill extractor market is very, very stable until that one particular weekend, November 7th or 8th, ignore the, ignore the very large dip there. That's not, that, that's an anomaly for getting somebody Somebody managed to sell something at a really low value, probably away from Amar, but it's catching here in the price history. Because if you look at the at the little boat, the median price for the day is still 4.9 billion. That means that that like one person might have bought something at a really low value. Everybody else bought at 4.9 billion. But if you look. Right near the end, there's this big dip and then a, then a price recovery, right? The weekend of the 8th, 9th, and 10th, or maybe even the 6th, I forget exactly what day it was, just, just last week, CCP had a two-for-one skill extractor sale, and lots and lots of people bought them to sell on the market because all of a sudden their dollar or their quid or their ruble went a whole lot further. It went twice as far. 
And what happened was the price just fell through the floor. And if you're over in Jita, you will see an absolutely epic price drop. Now, I had just returned to EVE probably three or four days prior and was going around looking through all my stuff, trying to relearn where I'd left all my shit and found a package of 15 skill extractors. I had 15 skill extractors and I was like, eh, I'd rather have the instant skill extractors, which I'm never going to use because I don't, I don't do a skill trading. And so I sold them and I made, I don't know, like nine, eight, eight billion isk. The very next day, CCP said, hey, by the way, two for one sale, and the price fell through the floor. And the reason I know I made eight billion isk is because the very next day I bought back all 15 and still had a billion isk in the bank. I had made a billion isk literally doing nothing. I sat there for a day and bought the, I, I still have the skill extractors, right? Freaking, I did, my position has not changed. I still have 15 skill extractors in a, in a station container in Jita sitting there waiting for me to get ready to sell them again. And, and you know, in a month or two, I will. And then I'll wait for the next price crash and I'll buy another 15 and I will, you know, be up another billion isk. That is station or is um, investment trading. Okay, investment trading is not day trading. Day trading is you buy it, you, it shows up in your hangar, and you immediately set up a buy order for it as soon as you have enough of what you feel like is a good ratio of things to sell versus what you still have left on your buy order. I tend to divide it into thirds, all right? So I'll take my buy order, divide it into roughly three equal parts, and as soon as I fill one third of the buy order, I'll put that up. Uh, as soon as I fill a second third of the buy order, I'll put that up so that I have two sell orders for every buy order. And then when the buy order finally dies, hopefully by that time I'll at least have sold off one of my sell orders. And if I haven't, I'll wait until one of them is. But then once I've done that, I'll recheck the market. And if the market is still good, then I'll set up another buy order and do it all over again. Um, and as long as you have that, it, you will find it in general harder to sell things than to buy things. Okay? You will accumulate inventory a little bit faster than you sell inventory. And that's just the nature of things. Freaking, there's a lot more things that people don't want and are happy to sell to you than there are things that they have to have so badly that they're going to go to a market and buy a lot of them. All right. So how do we find these things? Because quite honestly, it really sucks trying to go through this market list that has literally thousands of things in it, right? I mean, just in drones, there's probably a hundred different entries, right? And you don't want to click entry after entry, looking at the price history and all of that. Now, there's a faster way to do it, right? And I'm going to teach you that faster way to do it. I have put in a link to a little site called Adam for Eve, and I take you straight to the margin finder tool. So let's go ahead and click that link and take a look. All right, again, oh gosh, it's very complicated. There's numbers, help me, help me. No, it's very, very, very easy. All right, you're gonna fill in a couple of things and then you're going to organize by a couple of columns and then you're going to pick those things in those columns and that's it you're done right? this this is this is how you find good deals now it is not how i find all of my deals right there are things that i like to trade in that will not show up in here because we're going to put our our filters kind of tight so that we don't accidentally put things in the list that end up being bad for us unintentionally. We're only going to look for things that are really good for us. Okay? So for example, there are a lot of ships that I like to trade in, but ship markets tend to be very volatile. And so you'll put in 400 million isk worth of ships 
and you'll buy them and then you'll try and sell them for you know 480 million is worth of ships and then somebody will come in and put 10 for like you know 20 percent less than what you were trying to sell them for and all of a sudden everybody else goes oh well i have to beat that price and then all of a sudden you've got 50 ships that are all 20 percent less than what you were hoping for and you're stuck with you know 400 million isk of ships waiting for the margins to come back up. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and set this up such that you avoid a lot of that real volatility. And the way you avoid volatility is through amount of sales, through the velocity of sales, right? If there's really high grass with really big numbers on the side, like in the hundreds or the, even better, the thousands, then the volatility of that market is going to be much less than the volatility of a market where there's only 10 sales per day, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is up at the top, we're gonna see set margin filters and taxes in a little, little box up at the top. Also, by the way, Adam for Eve does one of the best things I've ever seen on a complicated website. There's that little white box that says help. If you middle click on that to open it up in a new tab, it will literally show you a picture explaining every single thing. Okay. Now we only need two or three things on this, but it is really nice to be able to see exactly what all of this stuff is, is telling you. So, all right, what we're going to do is we are going to click on region and we're going to type in domain. Minimum trades, we are going to go with 75. And minimum trade to disk, this is the big one, okay? You want to, right, the, the smaller you put in this number, the smaller the market's going to be, right? Now, with a ratio of 75 trades to 100 million isk, well, divide 75 by 100 million, let's do that. You're going to be looking at items in the million 300,000 range usually, but if the, if the, that's at the very bottom end, right? That's the minimum number of trades. If the number of trades is 5,000 and the minimum traded is just happens to be 100 million, the items then are going to be very much cheaper. But on the plus side, their velocity is going to be absolutely phenomenal, right? If you're trading 100 million ISK in stuff that costs 50,000 ISK, there is a lot of that shit that is being bought and sold. And so as long as your margin is like 20%, freaking jump into that market quicker, you know, as, as quick as you can. So, all right, so we're going to leave it at 100 million ISK also. This uses EU for EU notation for large numbers. So those are dots. It throws me off every single time, so I figured I should mention it. Leave everything the same right now because you guys don't have any uh, skills trained. And click set filters. All right, now uh, reactive heart, armor hardener should be up, the, up at the top. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the spread column. All right, and then it's gonna show you things that will be negative, and these are things you wanna stay away from and then click spread again. And you will notice that large skill injector in Amar has a spread of 10 million isk. Uh, now, it has a spread percentage of 1.2, okay? Which means unless you can get your prices and your broker's fees and your seller fees and all of that, under 1.2, you are not day trading in this item at all, right? You will flat out lose money on every sale. This is something where you buy them for 800 million ISK and then you sit on them until the price rises and then you sell them, right? So those are an investment item. Those are not a day trading item. However, if you look a couple of, a couple more down at the reactive, reactive armor hardener, the spread is 102%, right? And that's a pretty good margin. So let's go take a look at it. Let's go and hit reactive armor hardener in the search bar. All right, so they just had a huge price spike. The little boats tend to be up at the top, but there are days where things are selling. And if you'll remember, what I told you is you will generally have a harder time selling than you will buying, right? So if things are up at the top, but there are still buy orders, that are being fulfilled, so the boats kind of get pulled down to the bottom a little bit. That's actually a good thing. So we look at the grass, and the grass line starts at 250, and so probably averages about 
about 160, yeah, 160 a day, of which most are sell orders. So you're looking at probably, I don't know, 50 to 60 buy orders a day. So if we were going to invest in this market, let's take a look at what other people are buying in the market data screen. 30, 99, 48, yeah, when one guy has decided he wants to put a buy order for 150 in there, and that's okay. He's gonna have that order there for a long time. Now, but take a look over on the expires in column on the buy orders, right? 89 days, 22 hours. Really, somebody said a one day order? Okay, uh, 89 days, 89 days, 89 days, 89 days, 89 days, 29 days, 29 days, 89 days, 89 days, six days. 80... We still have not gotten to the bottom of the people who are trading in this today. Okay, so while this looks like a good item, there's 15 people that you're competing with. This is not an item that we want to be trading in, so we are going to ignore it entirely. Let's go to the Basic Radiance Cerebral Accelerator. It's the one next. Eh, no, the spread's too small. Um, you know what? There is something I want to sh I want to look at. It's an item that I trade in. Uh, so let's reduce the minimum trades to 25, and we'll have to fix the spread again. There we go. So let's look at the Potent Radiance Cerebral Accelerator. We can look at the extended one, but that goes for 60 to 83 million ISK. The potent one doesn't have quite a spread, but it starts much lower at 42 million ISK. So all you have to do is type in Radiance and all three will show up. All right, so if we look at the Potent Radiance Cerebral Accelerator, and you will see my buy order. I very deliberately did not touch my buy and sell orders today much so that I could have examples of what it looks like when you leave things alone. I last touched this this morning. Yeah, it looks like this morning. So 89 days, 11 hours. So that was about 12 hours ago. Yep. Yeah. When I woke up, again, as I was logging into work, I'm lucky enough I work from home so I can have this up all day if I want. Now, you'll notice I'm selling five of them for 58,420,000. Three hours after I put mine up, somebody came along and put 58,39. And that's okay. So let's take a look at the price history. You'll notice that all the boats are in the middle. They tend to congregate a little towards the top recently, but earlier on they were a little more towards the bottom. It's about even. And you're getting probably 20, maybe 15. Yeah, so about 20 per day being sold altogether, which means there's about 10 per day being sold altogether. Or, to sell orders and about 10 being sold altogether to buy orders. When I put up my buy order last week, it was a little higher, so I put it up at five, which is about, I, I tend to do about a half day total trade for one buy order because trying to fulfill a full days worth of buy orders is going to take me like a week. If I do a half day, it'll take me three or four days. Because again, you're not the only one doing this stuff, right? So let's take a look at our competition. Starting with the buy orders, right? We've got 29 days, 89 days, 89 days, 89 days, six days. And then there's a couple of day gaps. So if I were to put in another buy order, I'd be competing with five other people. Now, there are a lot of people trying to sell these off. There's a lot more people trying to sell these off than there are people trying to buy them, right? And then again, going back to, it is a little harder to sell things than it is to buy things, okay? So starting at the very bottom, we've got one, two, three, me, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, twice as many people trying to sell them as there are people who are trying to buy them. And only 10 are being sold per day from sell orders, which means that if I were to wait for the market to clear, we would get through half of that one guy who's selling 10 today, and then 10 more would show up from the buy orders and over the course of a day or so, those would probably be sold. So it would be several months before mine actually got, well, several weeks before mine got shut up. So we're going to modify this order. 
there are two ways to modify orders. One is with the mouse scroll wheel. The other is with typing. With typing, you are going to have to watch yourself very carefully that you do not typo things. Okay. In this case, though, it's only a difference between 58 and 57. Now, it used to be that you could the scroll wheel went up in increments of 0.1 isk. All right. A couple of years ago, the CCP changed it so that they take the most significant digits. Okay. In this case, this is the 58. All right. And then they go back one grouping. All right. So the in my case, the 420. Woo so when you adjust your prices, my price will go from 58,420 to 58,410, right? A price difference of 10,000, all right? Now I'm selling five, so it's a total of 50,000 S. So now I'm going to be making 50,000 S less, but my broker's fee is 1,138,900. 95 ISK, okay? That is about a 20th of the cost of one of my items, okay? Doesn't sound like a lot, right? But if I adjust this 10 times, right, then I have lost half of an item, right? Don't adjust your orders more than about once a day. If you can, adjust them every two days, okay? Also, you'll fool people into thinking you're not competition on the second day. So I'm gonna scroll it down to 57,970 or 960. Now, because I'm lowering the price, the broker's fee actually goes down a little bit, but it does not go down enough to matter, all right? That broker's fee will kill you if you go in and adjust this price five times a day for a week, right? You will make no ISK, right? I mean, the margin on this is what, 10 million on 40? So roughly 20%, right? You're gonna spend all of your margin on broker's fees if you keep adjusting. This is why, uh, th this, is, this is actually a really good change that CCP made. When they first made it, I hated it. I was like, what the fuck? No, no, it is a fantastic change because it means the only people who make money in markets anymore are people who understand how markets work, okay? And always being at the top is not how markets work. It is knowing how much product clears in a day and making sure that you are within that range when you want to be is how markets work. And, and that's how you make sales. And you don't make sales by always being at the top. Like, you know, you can train a monkey to do that. And in this case, what I want to do is I don't want to be at the very top, actually. I want to be above the guy who's selling 10 of them. Because, again, 10 of these are going to sell, right? Now it's the end of the day, so probably seven have already sold, but it's a continuous 24 hour. So within the next 24 hours, 10 of these are going to sell. So, I don't care about the guy who is selling one, and I don't care about the guy who is selling two, all right? I am gonna sell my five at 57.97, just like the guy at one. So now I have lost 1,130,415 ISK, but I am now in second place. Right? I'm not at the top. I don't care about being at the top. I mean, I care about being within the range of things that will sell within the next 24 hours. That's what I care about. And, and that's what you should care about too. And that is about it for the basics of how to find and sell particular items. Another, is, wait, hold on, another thing that I like to trade in. Let's see if it's any good. Ooh, I'm still at the top of that one. All right, I'll go look at geckos. Geckos are awesome. If you look at the market graph for geckos, I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. I mean, this is something that you want to be in all the time, right? and once, once you have ISK, because they're not a cheap item. But if you look at the price history, all the bids are in the middle, the freaking heck, even the seven-day moving average is 
calm. Right? I have seen less calm 20-day moving averages. Right? And the the seven-day moving average just kind of floats around in the center of the river, and it's absolutely perfect. The 20-day moving average is as close to a straight line as you will ever see. Right? And the little boats, they tend to be up at the top. And they tend to be at the bottom, then they tend to be in the middle. Freaking, there is buying and selling of these things all over the place. But the only thing to worry about is that there's only about 15 or 16 of these being sold every day. So eight to sell orders, eight to buy orders. And the other nice thing is, holy shit, there's no competition. Now, notice, you'll notice that I have that little blue line there that's mine that's my buy order you'll notice it's at the top and you'll notice if you look at the expires in column 89 days 10 hours right and i put this in 14 hours ago and nobody has adjusted their prices to be a below mine or above mine nobody at all as a matter of fact i could adjust my price down almost 500,000 isk and i would still be at the top and that that buy order was originally five, so I have three sitting in my hangar, and I'm waiting for the other two to get sold to me, and then I'm gonna sell all five at once. And if you look at the top, at the expires in, 89 days, 89 days, 88 days, right? Now, one guy is selling billions of his worth of geckos, he's got 43 of them for sale. So the only thing I ever have to do when I'm selling these things is make sure I'm above him, right? And if he's smart and, well, he's got billions of this to throw around, so may, hopefully he knows what he's doing when he's station trading, he'll go, oh, look, freaking he's only selling a day's worth. I have a month's worth of geckos to sell, freaking I'm just going to let him go. And, and he, won't, he will save himself a bunch of money and just spend a little extra time on the market, and that'll be it. So that's another good one. A last one to look at, and this is a great place to start because it's super, super cheap. First, modules and ship modules, not like Navy or faction modules, just regular old T1 freaking warp scramblers and disruptors and turrets and those things. I started off as a station trader with, and I very deliberately limited myself, I gave myself 50 million esque. And that was it. Inside of three months, I was making, you know, I, I would have billion dollar or billionist days at least two, three times a week. A great place to start that isn't modules is exotic dancers. Well, right? <laughs> they have absolutely no use in the game, yet everybody loves having a couple of exotic dancers in their cargo hold. So if you look at the price history, the margins are stupid, and every once in a while, and you move the two or three hundred a day, right? One hundred and thirty is the low. Uh, Seventy-three. Okay, I found, I found a seventy-three, fifty-one. But there's days where, if you look back on the fourteenth of October, somebody bought eleven thousand. <laughs> Right. And OK, also notice that all the little boats tend to cluster on the bottom. So you are going to have a harder time selling them than you are going to have buying them. But who cares? You're buying them for 21,000 ISK each. And you're selling them for 250,000 ISK. Right? I mean, the margin is stupid and the volume is large. Just go play with them. It's fine. It's great. They're fantastic. Another good one is, especially in MR, command centers, right? Command centers are not sold locally. So a very nice thing to do once you have your remote buy and sell order shit set up properly is you go into the command centers and command centers sell at NPC stations for 81,000 ISK. They sell in Amar for anywhere from 100,000 ISK to 500,000 ISK. And why do they sell for 500,000 ISK? Well, here, let's... Ah, somebody came in along and, and decided, oh, wow, holy shit. <laughs> All right, so here, let's take a look at the Storm Command Center for Amar. If you take a look, there is almost nobody selling command centers. Almost nobody. There's me and one other guy, and he's selling 200 of them at 225,000 esk. Notice what the uh, what the NPC stations a couple of jumps away are selling them for: 81,000 esk. 
And command centers, I mean, they don't sell like super hot cakes or anything, but I mean, you know, your average day is right around 50, 55. And yeah, so freaking so what you can do is you right click on I like I like buying in Penergman at the Imperial Armaments Factory. I will literally right click buy this or again spin my scroll wheel till I get a hundred, right? Which cost me a whopping eight point one million isk. Right? And then click buy. And they will show up in my hangar in Penergman. Well I don't know freaking fly to Pernergman and this character doesn't have any hauling skills. So what do I do? I go to the haulers channel and I create a contract, a public contract, and I put the collateral for the contract, and this is important, for the sell value plus one point times 1.2, right? Not the buy value, the sell value. So put the sell value times 1.2 of whatever you think it is, right? And for this one, I used 500,000 ISK. And there's a reason I used 500,000 ISK. <clears throat> because when I looked at this Storm Command Center three days ago, there was nobody selling them at all in Amar. So I had a hauler for 1 million ISK, bring a uh, hundred command centers over and it took an hour and I put it up and nobody bit on the little holler channel. So I waited an hour. You could, you could wait a half an hour, but I'm polite. So I waited an hour and I put it up again. And within 10 seconds, somebody had picked up the contract and within five minutes, the contract was delivered to me in Amar, so they were sitting in my hangar in Amar. I right click, click sell. I put the price at 500,000. <laughs> so, again, it, you'll notice there are only five left. I made a stupid amount of ISK on storm command centers because nobody was selling them, and people are too. I won't say they're too lazy because they're not lazy. Again, they uh, time is isk to a lot of people, right? And some people would rather just overpay than spend another twenty minutes going to get shit that should be on the market already. Well, it wasn't on the market. I was the only one on the market, so I put them up for five hundred thousand isk, and I sold ninety five of them before somebody came along and um, cut my price in half. And he's selling. 200 of them. Had he been smart, he would have been, he would have put his 200 for 5,001 ISK, but he didn't notice that I had been selling them like hotcakes. So he's leaving money on the table. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'll, forget. I'll, I'll wait a week and he'll be gone and he'll forget about this and I'll do it all over again. Or if somebody else comes into the market, right, and they get into a price war and it drops down to like 100,000 ISK, then I will buy all of them from them and then relist them. Now, you cannot do that in markets in NullSec. Do not do that. You will get kicked out of the Alliance faster than your head can do a 360 at the speed of light. Okay? Don't do it. All right, and that's blue fucking. Here in Amar, that's just business. And business is fun. And that's what I got. So we got about 10 minutes for questions. All right. Well, I stunned all of you into silence. Excellent. I think I've got one. Go for it. So, how would you say, so I've got my character in Amar. If I wanted to also do stuff in G, so would I be better off making oh, a second yes. character? Or Thank how would I do that? No. All right. So, here's what I do. My death clone is in Jita. All right. I have a continuous buy order for uh, council shuttles in Bolchita and Amar. And I don't really, I'm not looking to make a whole lot of ISK selling the council shuttles. I will keep a minimum of five in each of my hangars in Jita and Amar so that I can just hop from one to the other because 14 jumps through a low sec. When you get to the low sec, whatever side you're on, either warp, if you're going to Jita, there's an Astrohus run by Spectre Fleet that is open to everybody. So you warp to that one and then you warp to the gate. 
when you're coming back, you warp to the Fortizar, run by Spectre Fleet, and you warp to the gate. That way you avoid smart bombers. You're done. That's it. Oh, also, train. If you don't have it, your shuttle will not warp in under two seconds, and you will not be insta-warp. So give me a second. It is evasive maneuvering. Make sure your evasive maneuvering skill is at least three. I think two works, but three is such a short train that, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. So what I do is in the mornings, I start off in Amar, and I do, oh, how I keep track of it. Most important button of all, and I can't believe I'm leaving it to this late, is the market orders button in the regional market box. It's in the upper right. It's right next to New Eden Store and Multibuy. If you click that, it will give you a list of all of your market orders. If you organize it by price, things won't move around. If you organize it by anything else, anytime you adjust it, it will try to move it to the bottom and it's really annoying, I don't like it. So I organize everything by price and I just go from the most expensive, which is what I care about, to the least expensive, which I could care less about. And you know, if I'm selling something for you know 50,000 ISK and it's not selling and it's been a week, okay, I'll take a look at it, but whatever. If I only have 10 minutes, then I want to babysit the things that cost 40 million ISK or 200 million ISK. I don't want to babysit the things that cost 50,000 ISK. Uh, so I organize it by price. If you double click on it, it will take you whoop, right to the thing that you're selling. Easy peasy. And you just go down the list. And then you look at your hanger for things that you've bought but haven't put up buy orders for. And then you're done. So then I'm done with Amar. Then I hop out of my little shuttle and I death clone over to Jita. And I do exactly the same thing for all the things that I have in Cheetah. And then I hop in a shuttle and jump for, and warp 14, 14 gates back to Omar. And I deposit the shuttle in my little pile of shuttles. And then when I get enough of them, right, because my buy order is in, my big buy order for shuttles is over in Cheetah. When I have enough of them, and I'm using council shuttles, not like, you know, 50,000 is Minotaur shuttles. So when I have enough of them, I put up a buy order in, uh, I put up a buy order in Omar for much more than whatever, or I put up a sell order in Omar for much more than whatever the sell order is in Cheetah. And so I even make money when I'm traveling. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, I don't make a lot of money when I'm traveling, but again, you know, how many people can say that? How hard is it to find upside down items inside a station where they're obviously upside down? Upside down in what way? Where I'm buying it and turning right around and selling it for a higher price than what I what was listed. <laughs> um, so you want to look at the price history. And the price history will show you um, a wide Donchian channel with a lot of the, as many of the dots as you can possibly manage in the middle of the Donchian channel. That's how you tell something is good to buy. And then once you have that list, you can do it one of two ways. You can make a list of all the things that you want to, that you want to take a look at, but then you have to take a look at the volume at the bottom to make sure there's enough volume for you to be bothering to trade in, right? If there's a price difference of 10 million, then the volume of 10 is fine. If there's a price difference of a hundred thousand, well, the volume had better be up in the hundreds, right? So a wide dungeon channel with all your little boats in the middle, tall grass, and then you go over to market data and you see if it's an item that's within your price range, right? When you're just starting out, things that are within the 200,000 to 300,000 disc are good, right? And don't, you want like a wide variety of things, right? You don't want just ship modules right? and do command centers, do, please do command centers. Not enough people are buying command centers in, in, in or not enough people are selling command centers in a market. Like there is no competition here. Please do command centers. And I feel, I, I literally feel bad for all the people trying to do PI in the domain region. Friggin' because they go to a market and I'm going to do two, I'm going to go get commit. No, there are none. But yeah, you just, and then you find things that are in your price range. And if they're in your price range and the volume is right, then you put up a buy order. Generally for about half of a day's fulfillment of buy orders. 
right? Because I mean, if you put up a full day, you're looking at a week to sell or a week to fill. If you put up more, you know, and every day after that, you're looking at a week again, because there will be competition of people being above you in the buy order uh, order, and they will get theirs filled while you will have to wait your turn, right? So your time at the top is limited. So trying to purchase a full day's worth of the sale of a product is going to turn out badly and it's, it's going to frustrate you and you're going to end up spending a lot of ISK adjusting your prices when you really shouldn't right? and just do a half day's worth of whatever the buy orders are and leave it at that. That way your ISK can turn around and you can go buy something else, right? And it gives you a lot more flexibility than, you know, putting in an order for a thousand of something when only 50 buy orders sell. But yeah, just look at the, just look at the Donchian channel first, right? Look at the, look at the river. If it's nice and wide, great. Start there. And all the little boats are in the middle. Awesome. That is an item you definitely want to take a look at. Then you take a look at the grass at the bottom. If there's a lot of volume, so far, so good. We got three checks. Then you switch over to the market data. It's in your price range. Buy order. Boom. Done. You don't even think about it. You just set one up because you've already figured out how many, you know, how many buy orders get sold a, a day because you looked at the volume. I, oh, yeah. And another thing, I, I've said it before, but it's okay if the boats are all on like like tend to congregate on both banks right if there's a bunch of boats at the top and a bunch of boats at the bottom for the next few days and then it switches that is okay that is essentially the same thing as all the boats being in the middle just distributed over a longer period of time okay? it just means it'll take you a little longer to fill your stocks or a little longer to sell things which is which is fine can you actually make some decent ISK from a um, an alpha alt, or do you really need those Omega skills? So you can. It is. Uh, I was going to say it's 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 difficult, but it's not. You just have to pay a lot more attention. You have to only invest in things with very large margins and very high velocity. If you watch Oz Eve on YouTube, he has not one but two YouTube playlists where he takes an alpha and inside of a month, Omega's it just on station trading and just doing 20 minutes worth of station trading a day. And, and he starts it off with like a stupidly low amount of ISK. I think he starts them off with like 50 million ISK. You know, the amount of ISK that you can make on an alpha by doing the starter missions. So he takes that amount of ISK, gives it to an alpha, and says, go. And he spends 20 minutes a day on it. And at the end of the month, he's able to buy enough Plex to Plex his account. Me, I spend too much ISK on really expensive ships that then either sit in my hangar as hangar queens or blow up spectacularly to do that. Oh, another thing I do, every morning when I wake up, I look at how much my wallet has changed. I take 20% of that because I assume that's what my standard margin is and buy Plex with it. And then I don't do anything with the Plex. I just let it sit because Plex will generally always rise in value. That's all I got. Let's call it here. And that concludes this class. Thank you for coming and thank you for letting me talk at you for an hour and a half. <laughs>